Brothers and sisters, welcome to this devotional today. You see me? I'm back here by the, by the doors. To, to your left, no, nope. to your right, down. There, there I am. See me back here? I'm all the way back here because I wanted to talk to you a little bit about the structure of the church. Yesterday we talked about that thing called the rood screen. If you have no idea what I'm talking about, take a look at the devotional from yesterday and you'll, and you'll see. But if you look all the way back here, you'll see a glimpse of what churches have historically looked like in so many cases, especially as we look at what we call Gothic architecture. Think about a cathedral, maybe like the National Cathedral or, or some of the cathedrals that you find in New York City or in Ireland, England, around the world. Huge cathedrals. Well, their shape is actually very intentional, and a lot of modern churches are designed with that kind of architecture in mind. And Grand Blank United Methodist Church has a little bit of Gothic architecture as part of it. But let's take a little bit of look at scripture and, and see what I mean. In John chapter 3, Jesus has this encounter with a man named Nicodemus. There was a Pharisee named Nicodemus, a Jewish leader. He came to Jesus at night and said to him, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher who has come from God. For no one could do these miraculous signs that you do unless God is with him. Jesus said to him, I assure you, unless someone is born anew, it's not possible to see God's kingdom. Nicodemus asked, how is it possible for an adult to be born it's impossible to enter the mother's womb for a second time and be born, isn't it? So here's the strange thing that Gothic architecture did. Is it took that story very seriously. And in the design of the church, the physical church, they wanted to keep that idea in mind. That when we come into the church, we are in the process of being born anew. And when I say come into the church, I don't mean in a, in a spiritual sense, but in a very physical sense. When coming into the church, you experience God's grace, you experience the word of God. And like I said, even in the time of the Gothic architecture, in the Catholic church, you would experience the the host, the Eucharist. Well, in the Methodist Church, we experience communion a little differently as, as symbols of the body and the blood of Christ. But either way, something is imparted on us. Grace is imparted on us. We become changed in this space. And then we take the walk down this aisle and we exit out these doors. Now, if you look at the shape of the exit, you'll see that it actually kind of resembles, this is weird, I know, the birth canal. If you look at architecture from the Gothic ages, you'll really see this image. And you know what? It's entirely intentional. Because we are reminded that as we exit this space, church isn't done. Rather, we are being reborn. We are being reborn to go out and to see God's kingdom. Notice how Jesus said, no one who isn't born anew will be able to see God's kingdom. I don't think Jesus is talking about heaven here. I think he's talking about unless we become born in the spirit and put away our earthly ways, unless we become aware intimately with what God cares about and an exit through these doors changed different than when we first came in, if we exit being reborn and be reminded by the architecture that we are reborn into this world, we can see things differently. We can see things differently because now we understand God's grace a little bit better. Now we experience God's grace a little bit more. So the next time you walk into a church, 
Ask yourself, do I intend to be changed today? Do I intend to leave this space different than when I came in? And regardless of the architecture, when I walk through those doors to the outside, am I reborn in such a way, again and again and again, that I can begin to see God's kingdom here on earth as in heaven? Amen.